Greetings, my name is Mehdi Parvini. I am the Chief of the Engineering Services or Materials Office. The subject of my presentation is Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design. I will start with a general background on pavement engineering in order to explain the need for a new pavement design methodology. I will briefly explain the current empirical method and then move to the main subject of mechanistic empirical approach. At the end, I will discuss the implementation of this method in the district. Pavement engineering has changed significantly in the last century. Trucks are heavier, traffic volumes are more, and the public expectations are higher. There are also new roles for highway pavements. They are supposed to be the solution to stormwater management, reduce global warming, and produce renewable energy. Pavements are also used at landfills for crumb rubber and plastic and are considered as sustainability indicators when it comes to recycling. The method of building pavements has also evolved in the recent years. Pavements could be fabricated in a plant and installed during a night shift. They could be fully reinforced or be placed in two lifts. There are also several new pavement types and materials recently introduced to the highway agencies. All the above changes have a profound impact on pavement engineering and justify the need for continuous improvement of the pavement design process. However, pavement design has not adapted quickly with these new requirements and technology changes, and the existing empirical methods do not address any of the above developments. So, what is an empirical pavement design? It is a design based on testing a number of pavement sections and recording their performances. Our existing empirical design method is based on ASHO road test. By the way, ASHO was renamed ASHTO in 1973. The ASHO road test, a $27 million back in 1960 investment, and the largest road experiment of its time was done by the American Association of State Highway Officials as a study of the performance of pavement structures. Loaded trucks were running on the test loops 24-7 for almost three years. The observed pavement damage of each test section was correlated to the pavement layer configuration and loading frequency. The results from the ASHO road test were used to develop a pavement design guide, first issued in 1961, with major updates issued in 1972 and 1993. The 1993 version is still in widespread use in the United States. As you can imagine, none of the pavement enhancements discussed earlier were conceived back in the late 1950s. This explains the shortcoming of this uh, empirical approach. Empirical design is based on observed pavement performance. Inherent in any experimental testing, the number, configurations, and conditions of the testing are limited. Empirical pavement design is not capable of properly addressing current heavy loads and high traffic, new materials or construction methods, different climates and soil types, and different pavement damages. Empirical methods are also often conservative. They are not cost effective, have a short design life, about 20 years, do not result in high performing pavements, and do not consider variability in the design. On the other hand, the mechanistic empirical approach takes into account all factors affecting the behavior and performance of a pavement structure. Some of these factors are traffic, including wheel load, wheel configuration, truck classification, frequency and speed, climate, including temperature, rain, groundwater, freestyle, soil, 
including type, string, expansion, materials, including behavior, string, durability, failure mechanism, acceptable damage, and reliability, which is based on probabilistic approach. ME method mechanistically calculates pavement response, including stress strain deformation. However, there is still an empirical element to relate the response to the pavement damage. That is why the method is called mechanistic empirical. While the empirical method is the main pavement design in the current version of highway design manual, the department has theoretically adopted the mechanistic empirical approach back in 2005. However, it has not been practically used for day-to-day -day district projects. It is anticipated that the upcoming version of Highway Design Manual eliminates the empirical method and switch to mechanistic empirical. The use of the mechanistic empirical method would result in cost-effective and high-performing pavements. It also allows the design of new pavement types and materials. A glance at mechanistic empirical development history shows that the concept started back in the 1980s. An NCHRP study, National Cooperative Highway Research Program 1-37A, was completed in early 2000. Ashto adopted the approach in 2007 and made the research into a practical tool, which later was called Ashtover Pavement ME Design. At the same time, California started its own study in early 2000, and an ME version called CalME was developed by UCPRC, University of California Pavement Research Center. As mentioned before, Caltrans adopted the ME method in 2005. With all the benefits of the mechanistic empirical design, one should consider that there is no free lunch. Using mechanistic empirical needs more reliable and comprehensive data, including traffic, climate, soil, materials, drainage, needs better field investigation, needs more stringent construction specification and better inspection, needs more support resource like design time, and needs better coordination of Caltrans units, such as traffic, operation, maintenance, construction, etc. As you can see in this figure, while an empirical method only requires a couple of input data, mechanistic empirical analysis needs a large amount of information to fully capture the pavement behavior. ME approach is still a work in progress. There are lots of gaps and unanswered questions. Although headquarters is supportive of this initiative, they are not quite knowledgeable on this subject. This required a huge effort on the district side to come up with appropriate guidelines, flowcharts, and internal policies to implement this method. An example of the ME application is the Marine Sonoma Narrows Corridor Project. MSN was one of the first projects that were analyzed with mechanistic empirical. There was a big challenge to address the budget overrun during the construction phase. Mechanistic empirical approach was recommended to try to address the issue. Without going into the details, the next couple of slides provide a general overview of the steps involved in a mechanistic empirical analysis. First, different pavement structure alternatives were considered. Each alternative was analyzed using the mechanistic empirical tool. Alternatives were evaluated and compared for different configurations and material types. And here is the result. The table shows a quick comparison between the pavement structures designed based on empirical and mechanistic empirical methods. The result of using the mechanistic empirical method was a saving of about $3 million for this project and allowed the construction to proceed per schedule. 
These are some other examples of the mechanistic empirical implementation in the district projects. In each case, the result has been either a longer lasting pavement or a more efficient design. The materials office is committed to implementing this innovative design for all the district projects. Thank you for your attention. Please contact me if you have any comments or questions on this subject. Have a good day.